still putting up seven dimes. So whatever team he's going to, a whole lot of offensive firepower is going to immediately be infused. As we say hello to our Eastern Conference guru, Tim Bontemps. Hello, Tim. Can you tell us, we know that Damian Lillard, one of his preferred destinations is Miami. But what does Miami think of that? Well, Malika, this is a moment that Miami has been preparing for, really going all the way back to last October when they signed Tyler Hero to a contract extension. Now, Hero signed a three-year or four-year $120 million deal. And by signing that deal then, he can now be included in a trade right now. If he was a free agent, a restricted free agent right now, and had to go through signing an offer sheet or signing a deal with Miami, that's another wrinkle that would be involved in this situation. Whereas now the Heat have been sitting here for months, knowing that they have a package built around Tyler Hero and draft picks and swaps in the future that they could offer for some kind of star player. And when you look at Damian Lillard, he's exactly the kind of guy that this team was missing in their playoff run to go alongside Jimmy and Butler and Bam Adebayo. A guy who can score in big situations late in games and take some of that pressure off Jimmy Butler down the stretch when the defenses are going to be focusing in on him. So certainly Miami is ready to go after Damian Lillard. And now that Damian Lillard has requested this trade, it's going to be very interesting to see if they can pull this off and create what might be the best big three in the NBA. Yeah, certainly. We didn't see Tyler Hero at the end of the, of the postseason at the finals as he continued to recover from that hand injury. Tim, how aggressive is Miami going to be? Do we have a sense of if they're already putting in calls? What does this look like? Well, Malik, I expect the Heat to be very aggressive in trying to get something done here, and that's because Pat Riley is still involved here in Miami, right? And you go back to 1995 when he took over the Heat, coming from New York in the Knicks, the Heat have been a team that have consistently chased stars. They went and got Alonzo Mourning and Tim Hardaway. They went and got Shaquille O'Neal. They obviously put together the LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. And then they went four years ago and got Jimmy Butler when it seemed like they didn't have a path to get that kind of player in their team. And certainly as they've been planning this out now for several months, this is the kind of guy, Damian Lillard, that as Pat Riley goes into the late 70s and into at the end of his career, this is the kind of guy that could be the guy that could finally put Miami back over the top and get the Heat their fourth NBA championship. Tim Bontemps, thank you so much for spending some time with us here on NBA Today. So we know that Damian Lillard on his list of preferred destinations. Miami is up there at the top. And Tim Bontemps just outlined for us how exactly Miami could get that done as we say hello to Richard hello. Jefferson. Hello, my friend. We haven't gotten a chance to get your reaction this morning to Damian Lillard's trade request. Let's start there. Well, it's about Dame time, right? Like that's oh, for me. Oh, waiting. I've been waiting on the about Dame time. <laughs> I'm 100%. No, no, for me, I, it's very clear. You know, we sat up here and we were like, what does James Harden want? That, does he want money? He's turned down money. Does he want to win? He keeps leaving semi-good situations. Dame has said he wants to compete. He wants to win. Right? He was hoping he can get that done in Portland, the place where he started his career, really set himself up to be one of the 75 greatest players, a future Hall of Famer, Rookie of the Year. He did not want to leave Portland. And that's where I think, for me, it's a weird situation. It was at a stalemate, and it's like, dude, you're not on the same timeline. The young players and Dame are not on the same timeline. We saw it with the Golden State Warriors and some of their young players when they tried to go Kaminga and tried to go Wiseman. Sorry, Perk. Sometimes great players and the young studs are not on the same timeline, so I'm happy for Dame. I'm excited that we're going to get to see him hopefully compete at a much higher level than he has the past couple years. What are you apologizing to me for? Because you cry every two seconds. Um, it's time for Kaminga. It's time for Kaminga. It's, it's like, no, I, I sometimes never, young uh, players, sometimes young players take a little bit longer to develop yeah. and that's not uh, on yeah, and, time yeah, yeah, and, and some hold on hold on VC hold on hold on hold on, hold on wow. time out. and sometimes great organizations do the right thing and sometimes some brilliant GMs do the right thing like we're witnessing right now with the Los Angeles Lakers and I know what we're going, do the Lakers you know, have to do say, with what it? did Kaminga have to do with it you don't want players no, I mean, I'm talking about Perk, all I'm Perk, saying Perk, is, no Perk. no no you talk let me finish let me finish since you wanted to change the subject and bring up old news, I'm going to bring up some new news. Did you see what the Lakers were doing? Oh, my God. Did you see what the Lakers were doing? Malik, let's Malik, 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 Hold on, hold on, Malik, because he started. Hold on, but but I'm saying. What are the Lakers doing? No, but I'm saying you tried to throw a slug. Say, uh, hold on, hold on. Just someone. say your statement, I'm bro. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. The Lakers just signed Jackson Hayes, Rui. What they're doing is the they're Russell. competing. 
They're competing for a title. Okay. They're still building for the future. Let's get back to Damian Lillard. That was my whole thing about Kamisha. Let's get back to Damian Lillard, our top story of the day, Vince Carter. Um, Good comparison. We we talked about Miami as a destination that's possible for him. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the other places that we could see him go because Dame does not have a no trade clause. Oh, you aggressively turned (laughs) off. I I, 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 can feel that. Yeah, I felt I felt the get to see the spots he misshaped on his I was rushing here. I'm just glad that his shirt is all the way buttoned up today. Is there another destination? Yeah. Please, you and me both are hoping for that. Is there another destination that you have your eyes on that Bobby just laid out in the previous segment? We're talking about San Antonio, potentially, Philadelphia, potentially. Those are some of the Brooklyn places. Nets, that I, I Brooklyn Nets, I, I kind of like more so than San Antonio. Like he said, he wants to try to win now and compete like these guys were talking yep. about. I mean, the spot is Miami. The that's, spot. That's, that's just what it is, uh, and I think that's the perfect spot for both parties. And you just got to, can you make it work, and can you, can you put something out there to make it acceptable for Portland? Uh, and, she, you know, I guess they're just trying to – they're going to go younger, draft picks, and just build for the future behind Scoot Henderson. Yeah, look, for me, if you're talking about San Antonio, that one was confusing. I understand how much money that they have to spend, how much cap yeah. space that they have. But he's just replacing one situation for another. Right. I, I, obviously, Victor is a stud. But you're going one pick. You're going the three pick. You're d- Like, no, he wants to be around veteran players that are ready to compete. Not necessarily for a championship, but just at a high level. So, for me, I, San Antonio, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even see that. Obviously, I think San Antonio was like, yo, if Dame's available, I'm not saying you don't take calls. But that doesn't fit with the exact same timeline that we were talking and, and, about. And I understand Dame wants to be in Miami. But Philadelphia, with him and Joel and B, would be magic. And let's go back to top duos in NBA history. When you talk about guards and bigs, right? You think about Kobe and Shaq, they got it done. We look at this season, that just Jamal Murray and Jokic. It's a different type of chemistry when you could go past superstar, a superstar guard with a superstar big. You don't have to worry about everything else. Now, I know... Dame could fit in any situation because, you know, he's one of those elite caliber players that you don't have to really adjust your offense. I'm just talking about the combination of a Joel Embiid with a Damian Lillard would be great. But, again, he's Philly is not on his list, but I'm just saying. Well, and a, a center like Embiid, one of the best defensive players in the league, can control the whole paint by himself and can protect Dame a little bit. Defensively, the question for Philly, there's no, there's no issue with the fit, obviously, is what goes out, right? Because they have a James Harden drama swirling over here. Is he going out in a separate trade? Yep. In which case, I probably have to trade Tyrese Maxey because I don't have anything else that Portland really, really wants. I don't have a ton of draft picks. So I've taken my entire starting backcourt and turned them into one guy. Do I have enough left over to compete for a championship? Maybe that duo is that good that you do, but that's a tough question for Philly, especially how young Maxi is and how important he is to their team. Just a piece of reporting here from our Adrian Wojnarowski. Damian Lillard's trade request, he's reporting, doesn't change Portland's intention to sign Jeremy Grant to that five-year, $160 million contract. Free agent deals, they can't be formalized and signed until July 6th. But we were talking earlier yeah. about whether or not they would maybe go back on that, try to, it's just something. You know, you know, that's why I was that's like, wait, that's right there. That's terrible. <laughs> Business. Yeah. It's like, hey, look, Dame's leaving. Hey, I'm sorry. Like, I'm so- Man. You Portland, understand, right? If, yeah, if Portland would have done that, they would have had some real, real, real right. issues. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a non-starter. That's a non-starter there for you. Um, l- let's go back to Portland's side of this, though, Zach. When they're looking at trying to get back those young pieces, those uh, picks in all of this, is Miami, what, what Tim Bontemps just laid out to you, a package centered around Tyler Hero, does that do it for you? So there are two trades that I think we have to throw out as outliers on both sides of the spectrum. Bradley Beal, no trade clause. Don't compare any trades to Bradley Beal. And Rudy Gobert, I think at that moment, everyone was like, what just happened? Yeah. And it is not age well. I think those are outliers. we got to disqualify them. You would like to get a Durant-sized return for Damian Lillard. All the picks, all the swaps, a couple of good young players. I don't know that it's going to quite get to that level because Kevin Durant is Kevin Durant. And the bidding was kind of more open in terms of the, not so many teams that traded all of their picks. But I do think Miami's got enough. I actually would look at, you know, Hero, all the picks, salary filler. What about Jovic, the kid they drafted last year, and the kid they drafted from UCLA this year? If I'm Portland, I'm asking for everything. That way I can sort of spin that. If I get those two guys or one of them, I can say those are almost future picks. I got five future picks, four future picks. I want everything. I'm trying to leverage them for everything. Hmm. But if you're Dame, right, and again, this was – 
I can't speak. I don't know anybody in this situation, but it seems like this was very amicable, right? It's like, we want you here. We understand your journey. We get it. You've done everything. You have been loyal. Okay, you, we're going to send you to where you want, but we're going to strip them of everything that you well, want. you I'm don't not, care about those young players, right? That's his whole thing. I don't oh, yeah, want that, that, those but, young guys. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You want to get everything that you can, but it's like, if for Dame and Miami, it's well, like... Stripping Miami. Yeah, from stripping the, Miami yeah, gotcha. of every single you, it's thing. It's what the, the Kevin Durant dilemma was. You want something to go back to. That's what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, but when you're going back to Bam on a bio, when you're going back to Jimmy Butler, when you're forming a, a big three... Kevin Love is there... You know, re-signed. So, yeah, so I, even I, like, if they lose, I care more about Caleb Martin in. staying there if I'm Damian Lillard than than Nikola Jovic, who is a yeah. teenager. Right. So I think you could make that one work, Perk. Absolutely. And, and look, with the Miami Heat, if they if they do have to give up a big package, they have proven to us that they could go find diamonds find in the those rough. Diamonds, yep. That's all we was talking about. Those undrafted Good guys. Point. The phone call that J. Cole had to make to Karan Butler to actually get uh, uh, Caleb. Caleb Martin a shot. So I'm not concerned about what Eric Spoelstra and Pat Riley and Alonzo Mourning could do in that front office as far as when they get Dame there alongside, if they get Dame there alongside Bam and Jimmy, or foot filling in the gaps. I'm, I'm not, no. What they do you think, get Vince? No, I agree. I, I think they're very capable of fitting the pieces. It's like, but say, what are you looking for? We have to get Dame here, and if you're Miami Heat, you definitely feel comfortable about filling in the pieces. So let's say all that goes down. Let's just, let's just hypothetically say, all right, Miami is in for this deal. Damian Lillard is headed there, Zach. Let's yep. go back to then who is the biggest piece of the NBA puzzle that all of us are looking at? It's James Harden. So okay. what then, what, what, what does that do for what Philadelphia? They, get, they are not in on this. What now? Well, if, if we're saying it's a separate trade and that James Harden is going to be a totally separate matter, then I think you go back to the teams that Woj talked about yesterday for James Harden, the Clippers, the Knicks. Obviously, the Heat have moved on if they were ever in it, and I don't really think they were. Right. And you just say, is there a two-team trade between the Sixers and the Clippers that makes sense for both teams? Because I do think the Clippers are looking around at all this noise going around them and think, boy, oh boy, we got to do something because what we have may not be good enough, particularly because our two guys don't play together yeah. all that much. Is there a two-team trade there that satisfies the Sixers, who need to win with yeah. Joel Embiid immediately, and that satisfies the Clippers, who probably want to try to keep a guy like Terrence Mann, not give up all their future first-round picks? That's a tough needle to thread between those two teams. I think, I think there is such a deal, and who knows if they'll find it or not. Well, we got to ask ourselves is, when it comes down to James Harden, is what is his market, and how do organizations view him right now? for us getting them over the top. Yep. We know what we see. I see a facilitating James Harden that has did a great job of transitioning his game. But again, if you're bringing him to your organization, can you trust him? Because history has shown that you can't. So you never know what he's thinking. You never know what he's thinking. So I just want to know, like, what is his value around the league and what will people be willing to give up when it comes down to James Harden?